kind of what we, we, we see a little bit of what the orbs uh, his role in this whole story is um, still don't understand what Dr. Midas and exterminatrix are doing with the mindless ones why they're in everything besides kind of like for just to steal stuff um, and um, I still don't know well, I mean, we know why Nick Fury assembled the team of uh, the kind of secondary characters like Moon Knight and Punisher and Doctor Strange and Ant-Man, Emma Frost, Black Panther, um, and then some more characters, Gamora, Winter Soldier. Characters like that that he assembled, we know his reasons behind that, but we don't have an answer to what they're going to do. Now that they know that Nick Fury has been murdering space uh, threats for years and nobody knew about it. So uh, there's still unanswered questions, but this issue is more just heavy action rather than answering things. So that's why this issue didn't or isn't my pick of the week because it's more action and not much story building or really it should be falling falling action since the next issue is the last issue but still uh we still have questions for this book and um i'm excited for the next issue the final issue because that's hopefully where this book will close out on a very high note because this has been a very good event so um original sin issue number seven was pretty cool next issue um which on possibly another week would have been higher up in this list if the other books didn't kind of top it. But um, I'm happy to say that I very much enjoyed this book. And that is Deadpool issue number 33. I have been dreading reading Deadpool for the past couple months. This story arc as a whole was not good. But this is the closing out issue of the arc. And um, at first, it's heavy action. It's actually funny. That's one thing. It's the book is actually funny. The Deadpool hasn't been that funny in a couple months as well. It's not hilarious as it was before, but uh, it does have good humor again. Um, there's heavy action at the beginning of it, but it's all Deadpool trying to save his daughter and try to protect his daughter. And then uh, some crazy stuff happens where she's put in really grave danger and she is, uh, or the I should say the, the situation is uh, resolved in a, in a kind of cool way. And at the same time, kind of uh, in wrapping up the story, we see appearances from uh, some of the X-Men, Jean Grey school characters, uh, can't remember, uh, I think it's Quentin Choir. Yeah, that's one of the characters that shows up in this issue. And uh, they get in a, Deadpool and him get in kind of an argument at the end of this issue on ethics and what is ethically uh, correct in kind of uh, what what they should do to kind of resolve what Deadpool's daughter has seen. Like, she's now seen a lot of killing in the past, how, not even a day. So, you know, they kind of argue over what they should do with her. I don't want to say, well... No, I don't want to say what they're arguing about, um, but it is reminiscent to, uh, I'll give you a hint, and if you've read Identity Crisis by DC, you'll know what I'm saying. It's very similar to a big conflict that is had in the Identity Crisis book. I'll give you that. So, um, yeah, but Deadpool 33, oh, another thing I really liked was they 
they totally just dropped the past couple issues. Like Deadpool left the the uh, killing vampires and stuff with Dazzler, all that kind of stuff. It was stupid. Um, he just left doing that, and at the end of the issue, uh, he kind of gets a phone call from his vampire wife, and she kind of is like, yep, we finished the job without you. I took Dazzler back to her time. It's all done. And I'm like, great. That is the best way to wrap up that awful story is to completely drop it. Um, so, anyways, I'm hoping that Deadpool comes back strong next issue. They're going to be doing a back-in-time issue, but it's going to the 90s where Deadpool was actually created. So, that this might be cool. The ending was pretty nice to this issue. Kind of got me excited again for Deadpool. Hopefully... Uh, the older the older artists come back on or maybe a new artist that is a little more aesthetically pleasing comes onto the book and um, I, I feel like I feel like Deadpool is coming around again uh, at least in my eyes I know a lot of people have dropped off those people that were liking the book and then there's just a lot of people that were never on it um, but anyways Deadpool 33 actually made me happy uh, next book, another book that made me happy was Batman issue number 34. Uh, this is just what I wanted from Batman. A simple Batman story. No, Not even any of his rogues gallery, just Batman versus uh, a murderer. A uh, regular murderer, no name. I don't think a name is given to him in this issue. Or maybe it is. I can't remember. It's, that's not even important. It's just Batman solving a crime. And uh, yeah, it's just a simple one-shot story. Good way to get off of, uh, to, to, to reel back from the zero year, the long, just months upon months of zero year. And all that. Uh, it's a good way to kind of come back to the present. See what Batman's doing. Um, this says it's kind of taking place with Batman Eternal. I've not been reading that. So I can't tell you how much it is or isn't. Um, I've not picked up an issue of that yet. But um, yeah, it was just like I don't, I don't want to give much away. Um, it was just a good story. I liked I liked half of the killer's motivations as to why he kills um although the second half I didn't understand I didn't understand why he picked his targets I understand why he was killing but I don't understand why he picked the targets that he picked I just don't I don't get it I've read it that that explanation a couple of times and it, it comes from Batman's mouth and uh, I still don't really get it so that's kind of why I take a little bit away from this book um, but at the same time it's exactly what you need coming off the zero year just simple not even no Joker, Two-Face, Clayface Buttface none of that just Batman so anyways, Batman 34, pretty cool. Really happy to uh, be back in the present with Batman. So yeah, next book, got Thunderbolts issue 29. This was a really cool book. Um, Punisher is, he's kind of made a list of, really he's just trying to kill all the Thunderbolts after they try to kill him, or really after... Uh, Red Hulk try to kill him and so he's getting back at all the other Thunderbolts for whatever reason I don't really understand because uh, they've not really fought back uh, besides Red Hulk trying to kill um, Punisher most of the other Thunderbolts didn't really do much to Punisher if anything um, we see Deadpool, we don't see Deadpool meet his demise, but we kind of see, like, 
him having lost the fight, if there even was a fight between him and the Punisher, uh, which is really cool. It's the first thing we do in the book, and it's actually a really cool way of uh, doing, uh, kind of putting Deadpool in his place. Uh, and I thought it, I thought it was fun. It was funny, you know, not out laughing my, you know, not I was like not cackling and laughter, but it was, you know, kind of funny. Um, and then for the rest of this issue, it's kind of Punisher versus Ghost Rider, and uh, it's a really cool fight. And yeah, that's kind of what happens. The way that fight ends is kind of weird, um, but funny. But at the same time, really a huge change from, I guess if you were a stickler on tone, the tone absolutely made like a 180 and went from, you know, one spectrum, one side of the spectrum to the other. I don't want to give too much away, but uh, the ending of this was also really cool and it's kind of uh, where Elektra and Punisher meet again and uh, it's definitely going to be interesting for the next issue. Uh, Thunderbolts has really made a turnaround. Um, the art is definitely tolerable for the book. Yeah, it's not my favorite art, but then again, um, as long as the book is readable again, or readable, I'm happy because I've not been satisfied with uh, Thunderbolts for a long time, even though I keep picking it up. I've dropped it and gotten back on, I think, three times. So I keep coming back to this book, and it's finally paying off. No. Anyways, sorry, you're going to just hear that. Uh, I actually stopped this is the second time I'm recording because this phone started ringing. I'm not going to stop the video again. Um, so anyways, next book was... Uh, a book that Hello. I was surprised Please about. Please don't leave a message. <laughs> Anyways, this book, um, and it's Amazing Spider-Man issue number five. It's the next book. Um, Clouded Journey had told me that the book was boring. And so after he said that, I was definitely feeling pretty down on this book and I was like I don't even want to read it and then I picked it up and I was like crap it feels thicker than the other books there's just going to be a lot of boring stuff in this book and I don't know our, t our taste must be totally different because I absolutely love this book um, this was an awesome Spider-Man book we see so much and like just like all the other Dan Slott Spider-Man stories that I've reviewed, there's so much going on that it's gonna. it takes a long time to cover in any kind of detail. So pretty much what we get in here uh, in a nutshell is Peter and uh, Sydney, this new spider girl that had gotten bitten at the same time as him, they're kind of having this like attraction to each other probably because of the spider bite um that it's it's they describe it as a primal attraction to each other where they when they're in the vicinity of each other it's like they have to make out and try to have sex um which lends it lends this book to some laughs and some awkward moments during the book but at the same time my favorite parts of this book is when black cat is kind of doing her thing and she's teamed up with Electro as we see on the cover and um, I just love Black Cat in this book uh, she's one of my favorite Spider-Man characters and to see her being done pretty well um, makes me happy as well as Electro another one of my favorite Spider-Man characters uh, seeing them team up and kind of plan against Spider-Man is really cool and just Peter Parker getting thrown into a situation where it ends up being very unfortunate for him on live TV in front of J. Jonah Jameson on his show. Um, and uh, 
Let me see if I'm missing any points. Um, the ending of this, I don't know what's going to come out of it. Either they could do what they're trying to do or what they tease they're going to do and make this really interesting or they can find some way to get out of it, which at this point would be very kind of uh, kind of unbelievable in just the situation that he's in. If he gets out of it somehow, it's going to be very unbelievable and they have to do something really cool for me to be like, okay, I can accept that. Or they can just go all out and be like, yeah, we just did that. Uh, now here's a big time story that we're going to tell you. Uh, because if what they do, and I'm being very cryptic about it, but if what they do happens, it's going to change the course of this story for for good. Unless some kind of weird stuff happens in the future. Um, but yeah, I think that's touching up on most of the points in this. Um, and yeah, so again, Amazing Spider-Man issue number five. This has probably been the best issue since Amazing Spider-Man's come back. And I'm um, happy about that. Hopefully it continues on the up and up. But finally, my pick of the week, shockingly. And that's kind of funny that I say shockingly. Um, if you know the character and know the book, you'll get a laugh out of that. And um, it is Spider-Man 2099, issue number two. Did not expect... This definitely wins cover of the week. Or at least character drawing of the week. Seeing as how there's no background to it. Um, but I was super surprised about how good the book actually was. Uh, just the writing by Peter David on... You know, just him as Miguel O'Hara. As Miguel O'Hara or... Um, Mike O'Mara <laughs> as he's kind of disguised himself as um, just his day-to-day -day life or you know he finds trouble even just going to the bank and he has to be Spider-Man and kind of the way he's accustoming himself to 2014 and um, just this book has a lot of laughs in it. it has a lot of laughs in it and at the same time it switches into like some serious drama and then goes to like a shocking moment. And then when you're reeling from this moment of shock, you know, you're kind of calming down and then boom, another just bomb blows up in your face. And that's how this book, this issue was. It just takes you on this ride of, you know, you're having a good time. Now there's some... There's some stress. Now you're like, what just happened? And, you know, you're like, wow, that was probably the climax of the story. And then, boom, you just got hit with another bomb in your face. And then the story ends. Um, that's the best I can explain this book without giving anything away. Um, this is only the second issue. I very much enjoyed this issue. The first issue was kind of just whatever. Um, but if the book is going to be going in this direction with this kind of writing, it's a definite recommend for me. I'm not going to totally recommend it just yet because um, there's only two issues out and only one of them has impressed me so far. But if it does go, uh, keep going like this, it gets my full recommendation. But, like that, no more books to review, therefore no more me to watch. So, I'm Wellington signing off for the Comic Book Lowdown, and I'll see you guys next time.